the Iceman cometh. Jesper Svensson, one of the PBA's most powerful players, burst onto the pro bowling scene a few years ago, becoming the youngest to ever win the PBA signature event, the Tournament of Champions. And while he's had some success since, Iceman sightings have been too few and far between. But today, Svensson returns to television with a chance to win a million dollars. All it takes is a perfect game here at the PBA Indianapolis Open. We welcome you to Saturday Night Live PBA-style sold-out crowd at historic Royal Pin Woodland for the Go Bowling PBA Indianapolis Open, where a $1 million payday is in play. The fairy tale story of Tom Smallwood re-emerges tonight. We have two going for their first career titles. And Jesper Svensson, the number one seed, brings his hard-hitting style to Indy, looking for his first win in years. We're going to begin tonight with unemployed auto worker turned PBA pro Tom Smallwood versus Nick Pate, who goes for his first title. Anthony Simonson looking for his first title of the season. Houston native Sean Maldonado also looking for his first career title. And Svensson, the Iceman, sits as your number one seed. We welcome you to the seventh event of this season's PBA Tour. Once again, Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson here with you. All right, NFL Combine was in yeah. Indy this week. So the GMs, the head coaches, all the scouts, what are they looking for? They're looking for precision. They're looking for speed. They're looking for athleticism. They're looking for power. Yeah. If they were watching Jesper Svensson this week, they'd be saying to themselves, we, we may have just found our number one pick. Yeah, he would definitely be a franchise player, wouldn't he? Uh, first off, he has the strongest, most devastating strike ball on tour. And many of the players and tour consultants out here feel that when he's on a favorable oil pattern, that he strikes more than anybody on tour, including Jason Belmonte. Well, guess what, Rob? Tonight, he loves these two oil patterns. He's the only southpaw on the telecast, and he's got the entire left side of the lane to himself. You and I have been changing, exchanging conversations with some of the consultants the last couple hours. One just hit me up about three minutes ago and said, what? Well, it's, it's the most conversation yeah. That, that I've heard about the million dollars, but so many feel that if the million dollars were to be won, Jesper Spenson has the best chance of winning it tonight. Tonight yeah. could be the night for that million dollar payday. And the Iceman standing by live with our Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, Rob. So, Jesper, there's been a whole lot of talk about all the striking that you've been doing this week, but you told me tonight that you were destined to bowl for this title. Why is that? I had one bad game in qualifying when I kind of fried out a little bit, and um, my bowl rep said, hey, what are you doing? I said, guys, I just posted a bowl for this title. I, I feel comfortable, and I know that I should be able to, to be here. And um, somehow I got here, and um, still tame, 10 more frames to go, so I hope I can go to work. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. We're going to see you in the final match. Kimberly, thank you. Our field size, it started at 120. We're down to five. 14 games of qualifying, and then the field was cut to the top 16. 16 games of round robin match play. The top five advanced. Close to 3,000 yeah. games were rolled this week here in Indianapolis just to get here to primetime Saturday night live on FS1, the Go Bowling PBA Indianapolis Open. Time to meet our first two competitors. The number five seed has three PBA Tour titles, including a world championship. From Saginaw, Michigan, Tom Smallwood. Impossible to root against Tom Smallwood. Not only is he just one of the nicest guys that you'll ever meet, particularly here on the tour, what he's been able to overcome in his life, laid off at General Motors, had a long talk with his wife, said, I, I, I'd like to try to join the PBA Tour. Well, she gave him a short little leash to try and make it, mm -hmm. right? He qualified for the 2009-2010 Tour. He starts today off with a strike. He took his game up to Wichita just months after joining the Tour. You and I were there for the call, winning the PBA World Championship. 
flashback to that one in a moment. Great start for Smallwood. Here's his competitor. The number four seed is looking for his first career title, and he's making his first TV Finals appearance. That is Nick. From Invergrove Heights, Minnesota, Nicholas Pate. Invergrove Heights, suburb of St. Paul. Only one of our four finalists, Randy, this week to drop a 300 game. Reminder, a $1 million bonus lurking out there if somebody is perfect in our championship match later tonight. Pretty good shot for the first timer there, Rob. You want to take a look at the oil pattern? I would love to, my friend. All right, let's take good. It's the dual oil pattern once again. The Marshall Holman, 37 feet on the right. Mark Roth, 42 feet on the left. On the right lane, the players are going to try to throw it to the 1-2 the board down lane. And on the left lane, they're going to play straighter but deeper. And look for the bowling balls to start transitioning and making their moves where the blue circles are down lane. Speaking of Roth Holman, the Roth Holman double show next weekend on FS1. Pate, his effort in the second. Oh. Helicopter messenger come across and missed the 10, but interesting to watch Nick Pate, his first ever telecast. He's using urethane on the right lane, Rob, and reactive resin on the left. And you can see the difference in bar reaction immediately, especially in the last third of the lane. And Rob, 95% of the time, the 10 pin is made every time. So strike spare to start for Pate in his first ever televised appearance. That's a heck of a start. Yeah, not bad. Both shots hitting the pocket. It's a good way to start. This guy's been here before. Rack attack solid. He's been here before, but boy, it, it feels like forever since we've seen him. Double wood in the second. His best finish from last season was fourth. Coming in light, leaving the 2-8. And the object when shooting the 2-8 is to try to cover both pins with the bowling ball. Quite a story on how Smallwood even got here yeah. tonight. More on that as he attacks the 2-8. Pretty good story. That one in remains clean. Time out for our flow bowling tournament highlights. And Tom well, used a dominating final game in match play to make the show. He started this match in 10th place. Yeah, and then he started this last 30th and final game with the front 10. So he had 10 in a row, leaves a pocket 7 10. Didn't know if he made it or not. His tour consultant said, Oh, you made it by a ton. Shot a 287. It, yeah. it was almost kind of a perfect storm because all the other guys that he had a leapfrog, and there were some big names, O'Neal, Belmonte. Oh, yeah. They all really struggled. Yep. The small one was dialed in. It's really? fortunate just to leave one pin. So you can hear that bowling ball rolling over the thumb hole, and, and it's because Tom Smallwood has a unique release, and his ball rotation is actually what we call, what we call a full roller. So it's covering the full circumference of the bowling ball. Whereas typically your roll, or, or, or the, what you're covering on the ball is called a three quarter roll, where the track is to the left of the fingers and thumb for a right hander. He actually is left of the fingers, the, the track starts to clip the thumb hole and then it flares off of the thumb hole and ends up between the thumb and fingers. Here's the arsenal for Nick Pate in his first ever Televised show. Dirty ten pin.
mental toughness. That one thing he's really, really been working at lately. Spare conversions under the lights in prime time. That'll test your mental toughness. Yeah, well, he's basically said that's what's turned his young career around. He's a three-time Team USA member, 2017, 19, and here in 20. A little team look from the 2017 group. That Marshall Kent up there, top right, I think. Yeah. Saw Sean Rash there as well. Medalist at the Pan Am Games last year. His best PBA Tour finish, third at the 2018 PBA Extra Frame in Lubbock. That was a non-televised event, though. Does already have one win over Smallwood this week. We're even through three. Back on the strike train. I love what he told us last night when he, he was talking about his mental toughness and he said, my tour rep, Tim Mack, said I was a maniac. I'm a maniac, maniac. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. I went on a tangent. No, that's it. Yeah, that's he it. said I was a maniac and I had to start processing differently. Had to take a look at himself. I, I got to calm myself down. He, he admitted he was mean. He was mean to his reps. Yeah. Right. H have you ever met anyone from Minnesota who's mean? No. Right? What an outlaw. Oh! Smallwood, your five seats right of target. He is, he's got some early issues. He's got a ball that's not even hooking down lane. So what does he do? He's got to get out of that ball and find oh, something that'll that react. It never hooked. It never hooked. <laughs> and there's the full roller rotation, but that ball never turned over. Start over. Did he just say start over? That's what he said. Yeah. Again, mental warfare on the lanes. One, two, eight, ten. Got it! Yeah, Tommy! I'm wondering if the urethane that Pete is throwing on that right lane is affecting Tom Smallwood. See what he does with that momentum. Down four. We begin the fifth. Left the eight. Ball's just done. No, you heard him say that ball's just done. Obviously, it looks good in practice, but not anymore. It's time has come and gone. Time to get out of that ball, Tommy. And he's got a commercial break to think about it coming up. Air shooting has been on point. Well, it usually is at this level, or if you want to get to this level, it better be, but he's doing uh, Nick Paid a big favor right now and sure not putting is. any pressure on the first timer to television. Smallwood started with a strike since then. Spare, 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 spare. Pate <sighs> trying to make this a double here in the fifth. He never quit on it, never turned his back on it. Look at this. As long as it goes down before the sweep hits, or before the, the rack hits it, it's good. Pin setter comes down, misses the 10 pin, and that's a big double. Everything going Pate's way early. Former collegiate bowler at Midland University. Second week in a row, we've got somebody yeah. from Midland University on the show. Go ball! Harry Crowell joined us last week. Did, did a pin just jump over those two? It looked like it went right between the two. And by the looks of strike track, that looked like a pretty good shot there location-wise. That's the yeah, head pin, yeah. Right it's between it. By him.
Got to be careful with this one, the 4-8. It's very choppable, meaning you can pick the four right off of this without hitting the A-pin. Nice cover. Well, Nick Pate is not the only pro bowler in the family, and a third is about to join the crew. That story coming your way next. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. Lucas Oil Stadium has been busy this week. The NFL Combine taking place in town. Busy sports weekend. Butler victorious earlier. Just a couple miles south of us here at Royal Penn Woodland. And now it's the Go Bowling PBA Indianapolis Open and Tom Smallwood, the veteran in an early hole here. It hasn't struck Randy since the first. Well, I, I look for him to make a ball change and, and that's exactly what he's gonna do right here. By the way, I have a uh, combine story, real quick one for you. The ball change. Oh man. But at least it was a better motion down lane. That ball actually curved. Now, bad break, the ball going right by the nine pin. But at least that gives him some hope. He makes the ball change, throws a good shot, and then this ball actually curves. Or, as some folks like to call it, hook. Uh, your combine story? Did you see about the 369-pound the oh, yeah. lineman that ran up like a 5140? That's incredible. Yeah. Speaking of incredible, how about what? Tom Smallwood did at the 2009 PBA World Championship. Wichita, Kansas. The guy had essentially just been laid off months ago. Yeah. Becomes a pro. And Tom he just, just did the dirty work. kept churning it out. You and I were there, yeah. and that was one of the more emotional events we've ever been a part of. There's Nick Pate. He leaves the 10 pin. I'm sorry, that was Smallwood. So now it's Smallwood trying to clean this one up for his sixth straight spare. Spares don't get you the paychecks. You need some strikes. Especially when you're trailing. Can't make up ground with spares. You gotta do string and strikes. And he's made it awfully easy for Nick Payton in his televised debut. Take a look at our score. I also wanna explain the plus minus. Check out that number right there. Plus minus is an accurate description of the score of the frame that the bowler is in. Max score and plus minus could be different depending on whether or not the player is on a strike. Oh! 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 There. Uh, Nick's got a good support cast in town for this one, doesn't he, Kimberly? He sure does. So Nick Pate's sister, Lauren Pate, who is also a professional bowler, made the nine-hour trip with her mom, dad, and brother Josh for Nick's first ever TV final appearance. Lauren and Nick actually intend to bowl together at the Striking Against Breast Cancer Mixed Doubles in July on the PBA Tour. But today, she's here to cheer her brother on. We mentioned that another pro bowler mm -hmm. about to join the family. Lauren engaged. Someone who's on the tour right now. Way right of target. Look at how far right that ball is compared to where he's been. It's a good four and a half to the right of target. You want to cover all three pins with the bowling ball, starting with just the left side of the head pin. to Matt Russo, who's on the tour. Mm -hmm. Mom, Debbie, Dad, Michael here. Brother Josh. 
Josh Go and Lauren bowled collegiately as well. Smallwood down 50. He, he just has got to strike. Nasty. That is that is no way to treat one of the best on the tour. Well, he never really believed in his ball reaction. Yeah. Changed to this the last time up went solid nine and then right through the nose for the big four. The big four only been made it's only been made once on television and that's by Walter Ray Williams Jr. The only player to ever make the big four on television. string of spares ends at six, an open frame in the eighth. This one is just being served up on a silver platter to Nick Pate. Yeah. You know, whatever he had in practice and what he liked, he, uh, he brought that one to the dance, and guess what? They stopped playing the music. Where she had the dance. I've been there before. back on the strike train. His first strike since the opening frame. Well, it's not over. If Nick Pate opens in either the ninth or 10th frame, Smallwood can still win this game, believe it or not. His max score is still 196. Nick Pate, if he goes strike, spare strike, in the ninth and 10th, they'll shoot 208. Clean through eight and up 31. Strike for Pate. And he is now that close to moving on to our next match. Like he just asked for a re-rack. He's got his wits about him for uh, sure does for being on television for the first time ever. He's uh, he's really staying in the moment. He's focused, making some good shots. Trying to win his first tour title in his first televised appearance. Last time that happened. It 2017, Richie Teese did it. So, Pate off that re-rack. You see the uh, two white slashes underneath the players' names right there. Well, Pate's got one re-rack left. Used one, Tom's got both available should he need them. Strike and he'll move on. Go boy! Very nice last couple of shots for Nick Pate. He's going to advance and take on Anthony Simonson. He strikes out. It's, it's going to be 228. I, I have to believe that it's going to take more than a 220 to beat Simonson. Agreed. That's a heck of a start for a guy making his debut under the lights of television here. Yeah, man! Kick of the seven. <laughs> so Nick Pate, the Minnesota native, moves on. Tom Smallwood is done. Coming up next, player of the year candidate, Anthony Simonson. Plus, we're going to be joined live by the Hall of Famer, Mike Alvey. Last week, we were with the PBA in Lincoln, Nebraska. For the US Open, Anthony Simonson taking on Jason Belmonte. Belmo victorious in this one for his 23rd title and record 12th major. The big news, though, is he put on the green jacket. It made him only the second bowler in history to capture the Super Slam, winning all five majors. Who does he join? Yeah, the Hall of Famer, Mike Albee, who's standing by live with Kimberly. Thanks, Rob. So, Mike, what's it like to finally 
have some in the Super Slam Club with you. Well, it's exciting. I mean, I, I had a great time watching it last week and uh, brings back a lot of great memories for me as well. Well, you are one of the all-time greats of all time. So what are your thoughts on Jason Belmonte? Well, I mean, forget the power, the accuracy, and, and all that. What I, what I find the most exciting as far as being somebody in the industry is the fact that Jason is passionate not only about the sport and the game, but the people in it. And, and just by watching the way he interacts with the fans and the sponsors, and uh, you know, it, that's what, what moves me the most. And he's a great guy. Well, thank you so much for your time, and we're very excited to have you here tonight. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks. Talking about great guys, that Mike Albee's one right there. And he was just talking about Belmo, who sits on top of our PBA playoff points list right now. The top eight, Randy, get a bye in the first round. The top 24, once the USBC Masters is done, advances to the PBA playoffs, which begins April 6th. Yes, for Stenson, our number one seed tonight. There he is currently in 12. That obviously can improve. The big nasty Wes Malott on the north end of the yellow line, but Sean Maldonado still the bowl tonight, currently sitting in 25th. He can easily yeah. leapfrog Wes and company with the win. And again, the playoffs begin April 6th. North Go, California, just east of Los Angeles. That's not far from you. You are correct, my friend. Well, the push to move up the playoff standings continues next. It's Pate taking on Anthony Simonson when our live coverage of the PBA on FS1 returns. Welcome back to the Go Bowling PBA Indianapolis Open and the on-lane graphics you're seeing in tonight's show, including the on-lane ball tracer. Brought to you courtesy of Clutch Bowling. Love that FS1 PBA logo down the right lane. So sharp. We update our stepladder bracket and Nick Pate a commanding 63-pin victory over Tom Smallwood. Smallwood, two strikes, two open frames. Meanwhile, Pate, eight strikes, including the final four. He is now ready for match number two. The number three seed has seven PBA Tour titles from Little Elm, Texas, Anthony Simonson. No U.S. Open hangover for Simonson coming off a brutal loss last week to Belmo. Maybe it's because of the affinity he has for this bowling center. Remember, in 2016, he won the Masters here, making him the youngest to ever do so. You're going to see him next Sunday as well. Yeah. In the double show. So a nice little run here for Anthony Simonson. I tell you what, a win tonight. And he is right amongst the top two, maybe three in the player of the year conversation. That is not how you start. Oh, goodness. That lane is really snug down lane, you know, where the ball comes off the end of the oil pattern at 42 feet and you think it's going to start going left and then it just keeps going straight. Exactly what happened on this shot. Backup ball action at that 210. He's really good at throwing it in that direction. We have seen that backup ball approach from him in the past. So what is a backup ball? Well, that's where you make the ball curve in the opposite direction. So that would be actually the direction a left-hander would rotate the bowling ball in. So he starts with an open frame, and once again, a nice, calm, easy segue into the match for Nick Pate. Go Pate takes advantage. He started off his opening match against Smallwood with the strike. He replicates that against your three seed, Simonson. Staying with the urethane on the right lane, kicks to 10 late. I'd like to take a quick second to wish my Savannah to wish my daughter Savannah a happy 24th birthday leap year baby. I was just thinking about when you and I first met that road trip we did Six Flags one yeah. of those Six yes. Flags yes yes she was in there singing 
singing some songs from bands I had never heard of. Yep. Go they go oh. fast, Randy. Yes, they do. No helicopter messenger there for Paige in the second. Well, he's made a ball change, Rob, on this lane. He's gone. He's actually gone to a stronger bowling ball, and and with when good you say stronger, what do you mean? Bigger engine, stronger cover stock. So the core, the inside part of the ball, is much stronger. Makes the ball roll sooner. So we're trying to create more traction. And for good reason. That left lane looks pretty slick, right? So if you're driving on pretty good road, you don't, you, you, you can pretty much do that with any tire. You get on snow and ice, you better have some snow chains. Roger that. Snow chains now yep. applied on the left lane. That's exactly what he's using over there. Which means it's going to chew it up for yeah. Simonson. Well, he's going to try to break down the lane so this ball can actually start curving. Check out the track there on the right lane that's already broken down right here. All right, you've got to the 10 pin. So Simonson, eight spare, rather open frame eight, nine spare to begin here. So we take a look at his arsenal. IQ Emerald on the left lane, pitch black on the right lane. Let's see how long he stays in this ball. Yeah, much straighter that time, but it doesn't hit hard enough. I wonder if he, I wonder if he gives that ball another look or another chance on the left lane. Would you? I think I might get out of it. I'd go to something stronger like Nick Pate did. Oh boy. Oh, he went to H&M and bought the skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Well, an open in the first frame is uh, something you can overcome, but two opens in the first three frames could be disastrous and just caught enough of the 10 pin. Price tag on those skinny jeans. Going to return those tomorrow. <laughs> you only want to wear them once. I know you've got skinny jeans back in uh, SoCal. I know you do. You know who's got skinny jeans? Go yeah! Yeah! with a strike. Who? My boy Stu Holden, who is uh, live right now over on Fox Sports, calling the MLS season opener. First ever game for Nashville taking on Atlanta. I've got it up on the Fox Sports Go app right now. I mean, what what a night for sports here on Fox and FS1 and tomorrow XFL here on FS1 as well. Why go anywhere else? Just bunker down. Just get more TVs. Yeah. Do whatever you got to do. Pete, up 13, can max out with the 280. We begin the fourth. Go. Yeah! Yes. Make it a double. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you catch me a little off guard, and and that's the idea. It's not. It's not often that I, I I'm rendered speechless, but you have you have that power over me. Simonson's got some power to his game but he needs a strike. Open frame, spare, spare. Here he is in the fourth. Simo, yeah, get him all the drop. <laughs> well, that look says bigger a lot of things to you, Randy. He just looked over to score and said, I'm going with a bigger ball on the left lane, but trip four is your best friend for a right-hander. Look at that. Exactly what he needs to get it going. <laughs> look how quick those eyes darted right. and the smirk popped up. Such 
such a good kid. Just 23 years right. old. Uh, let's make a good guess. And this is his seventh year already on the tour. Seven tour titles, two of them majors. So he's, he's going to a UFO on the left lane, which is Snow Chains. They may have to replace the wood when this one is done. Yeah, this is like a little snow plowing going on. But at least finally the ball grabbed the lane. And more importantly, he answers Nick Pate's double and gives Nick something to think about. But here is Pate. Looking for three in a row in his TV Finals debut. Three bagger for Pate, the lead at 23. Grove Heights, native from Minnesota. Grew up in the suburbs of St. Paul. His family yesterday started that nine hour trek to get here for the Go Bowling PBA Indianapolis Open. I mean, that's family. Only family does that. Go Look out. Holy smokes. That came back from Kokomo. Came back from Muncie, from West Lafayette, from Edwardsville. Hey, takes a seat. After having just dropped the ham bone, Simonson is up next, working on a double. Fun one concludes next. We welcome you back to FS1's continuing live coverage of the 2020 Go Bowling PBA Indianapolis Open. Coming your way from Royal Pin Woodland, one of the more revered venues in all of American bowling. Oh, legendary. Uh, I mean, it's the only center that's ever hosted every major. Former Don Mitchell, or former owner uh, Don Mitchell, longtime GM Jim Doty are both in the PBA Hall of Fame. Anthony Simonson's career is heading for the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. He needs some strikes right now. Messenger. Oh, my. Oh, my. Check this out. Headpin comes sliding in the home. It takes the catcher out. Give it a little hip check into the pit. So that's three in a row. Now Simonson trying to match the four in a row that Pate has dropped. You know what we're sitting on, Randy, don't you? Possible double hand bone. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Brooklyn hand bone, my favorite! <laughs> Sorry. There he is! <laughs> you bring a good sign to the PBA show, we're getting you on television. Listen up, people. Bring it to Vegas. Bring it to Reno, bring it to Norco, bring it to Dallas, bring it to Denver, bring it to Jersey, you bring a good sign. What am I doing, Randy? Getting you on. Or putting it on television. Yep, you get on the air. You wanna be on TV, bring a good sign. That is my pledge to you, bowling community. Nick Pate, the Minnesota native, oh! in the seven. Let's take a look at Nick's game from profile as there is no backing down in him anytime soon, but let's see what makes him work and what makes it work so well for him. A little late with a push. Look at that elbow bending, but a shoulder high backswing right here. We're used to seeing backswings that are a little bit higher. He's in great position right here. Look at the shoulders nice and open. And then look how steady the head is. You can put a plate of food right on top of that and that always helps you keep the eyes on the on the prize. Keep your eyes on your target, you might win something. Go oh, 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 straight 
stops at five. What a run for Pete. Now he's up by 22, as you see the plus minus, but the max score has changed, and that's because he just got nine, and Simonson is working on a strike. Just a little bit high leaving the four pin. Sister Lauren, mom, brother, dad watching. Look out. Whipped. Air ball on the four pin. Well, well, well. Simonson steps up. Looking for five in a row. This one air mailed. Yeah, just lack of concentration is all that is. Four pin, you, Nick and uh, most every pro out here can make with their eyes closed. Simonson now can pull this match to all even with a strike here in the eighth frame. It's the first open frame from Pate tonight. Simonson has been given an opening. Oh. Gotta be kidding me, I mean, 10 pin. There's literally nothing you can do when they're that close together. Simonson out of re-racks, as you can see right there. And he said there's nothing you can do when they're that close together. And I think he's referring to the, the one and the three pin being a little tight, that pocket being a little tight. That ball looked perfect, and it was a ring 10. So right here, Simonson out of re-racks. Pate still has both. And those re-racks, essentially timeouts. Give yourself a little break, something you don't see, or something you see that you don't like. Two 10 pins for Simonson on that right lane, Rob, and he has to finish the match on that lane. The, the question now is, how does Pate rebound from the open frame he just that, threw. Yeah, that, the inexcusable whiff on the four pit. We begin the ninth frame. Simonson down 11. Again, leaves that 10 pin. So you see the plus minus was 11. It's now 12 because he didn't strike. He got nine. So that increases the lead for Pate. And Simonson with a spare will be trailing by 12. And he's going to need a little bit of help. Jesus. Didn't like the landing spot of his foot. Still gets the spare. So Simonson had an open frame in the first. Pate had an open frame in the eighth. Let's see how he bounces back up 12. A mark in the ninth, a mark in the tenth. If he goes spare, strike, spare, or strike, spare, strike, he will shut out. Week 10? Yep. It's okay, he doesn't lose count because of the open frame in the eighth. A spare, he'll still maintain a 12 pin lead going into the tenth. thought the scores would be higher, a lot higher, based on what we saw all week. We haven't seen Jesper Svensson yet. That single pin spare taken care of. You saw his sister, a, a pro on the PBW, I'm sorry, on the PWBA tour, watching. It's a lot of letters. It's easy. It's like, PBA is easy because it's only three. <laughs> so apparently it just takes <laughs> one extra letter to throw me off, right? Well, that W is tricky, Rob. <laughs> All right, nine spare strike. Pate will lock out Simonson. If he gets less than nine on this ball, Simonson still has a chance to win. He could even have a tie. Go! Climb it for nine when you can get all ten. Bigger is better. The Pate family. Oh, that drive is paying off today. Well, that ball came ripping back and just split the rack in half. So here's that mental toughness for Pate. 
started kicking in back in September when he was in Sweden, of all places. Finished seventh at the Lucky Larson. Then made his first cut at the U.S. Open a couple weeks ago. He considered that a huge accomplishment. And here he is. One win under his belt in his TV debut. This close to making it two wins. Needs nine and two balls. Strike and he moves on. He left the 7 10. He needs one. He needs one of them. What a crazy hit that was. The player said there were a lot of 7 10s this week, but that's because they hit the pocket a lot. But that's a ring 10 with a 7 pin. Wow. Remember, he had an open frame in the eighth, but he missed the four pin. Yep. Not the seven or the ten. Got it. Oh, that is clutch. That's all nice. Good Woo! Two wins for Pate. And he moves on. So your number two seed, Sean Maldonado, steps up next in search of his first tour title. Plus, some of bowling's best hit the gas with racing legend Tony Stewart next. Indianapolis and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway considered by many to be the mecca of auto racing. And this week, some of the PBA pros got a chance to hang with one of the legends of the sport, Tony Stewart. That is the subject of tonight's Go Bowling Presents Pressing Questions with Kimberly Pressler. Anthony, where's the coolest place that you've ever bowled? Uh, I'd have to say it'd be right here at Tony Stewart's house. Well, that's easy, Tony Stewart's house. Tony Stewart's place, this is uh, pretty ridiculous. Just to walk downstairs from dinner to go bowling. This is pretty sick. Tony, you must really love bowling because you have a set of lanes in your house. How often do you get a chance to bowl? I am busier now than when I was a full-time NASCAR driver, so uh, I don't get to bowl a lot, but that's what's fun about coming home is to get your buddies over and we all have a good time together. What's your highest score? 235, which I'm fairly certain was an out-of-body experience. It couldn't have been me. What do you love about bowling? Well, it's it's got a lot of similarities to driving a race car because the way the lane conditions are and the oil patterns and, and where the, the oil is getting moved to and from, uh, it's very similar to what we do in dirt racing and trying to figure out exactly where we want to put our cars to get the most grip. So what is something that you learned from the pros here tonight? That I do everything wrong. <laughs> everything about my approach was wrong. But it's stuff that you don't know until somebody actually works with you. And just a couple little tips that I got, literally, uh, I think two out of my next three balls were strikes. You I was gonna say, you busy tomorrow? <laughs> Watching these guys come down here, uh, these bowling lanes will never be the same after this group of guys came down here tonight. Love watching the intersection of those two sports. Reminds me of Jason Belmonte out on the track not too long ago, bowling a strike in yeah. a race car, yeah, right? Yeah, chucking a ball out of a, <laughs> out of a NASCAR, right? How fun was that? And how fun has it been to watch Nick Pate tonight? A 227 and then a 226. He takes care of Smallwood and Simonson. Now Pate moves on to your semifinal match number three. The number two seed is looking for his first PBA Tour title from Houston, Texas, Sean Maldonado. The Candyman is back and making his fifth televised appearance. This 11-time regional champ has a unique two-handed style, and today he looks to win on the big stage for the first time in his career. He's a 33-year-old talent who won a remarkable four straight PBA Southwest regional events in 2016. Yeah. Four straight events. 
He'll sit and watch the four seed, Nick Pate, begin. Remember Pate struck in the first in match one, struck in the first in match two. Here he is, beginning match three. Good nine. You hear him say good nine, and he got that ball inside a target, and that ball just laid there. So the middle part of the lane has developed. There's a lot of oil in the middle and down lane, which gives the players a little bit more area. We talked about the majors last week and the three, you know, the two two weeks prior and how flat the oil pattern was and what that meant. So this is the exact opposite. In fact, all five players on the telecast today all averaged over 230 for the tournament. Head on over to PBA.com to check out the new PBA Pro Bowling video game. It features the top pros, real equipment, authentic oil patterns, more than 100 tournaments and online play. It's now available for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and for your PC. The two-seat, Maldonado from Houston gets him all the drop. Sean's never won the major, the, uh, a national event on the PBA Tour. Like you mentioned, he does have regional wins, but very unique two-handed style. Yet he actually does put his thumb in it, but still uses that two-handed style. And then he's uh, infamous for that little hop at the end. What does that hop do for him it, or against it, him? It, it's you know it's his momentum that's pulling him in that direction. Oh, oh, that was a good shot, and another one of your friends standing by. Stupid ten pin. So arrogant. <laughs> the audacity. Uh, nothing more I hate in a pin than arrogance. And that's all that 10 pin has. The narcissistic yeah, audacity. Look at me. Look at right? me. Knock down the other nine and then just focus on me. The 10 pin. Me, me, me. Yeah, hit into the pit. Take that 10 pin. So Sean starts with a strike and a spare. Pate steps up. 25 years old. Again, this is his first televised event from Invergrove Heights, Minnesota, just outside St. Paul. His mom, dad, sister, brother made the nine hour commute to see Nick in action tonight here in Indianapolis. Looking to become the first bowler to win a title in his first televised event since Richie Tease did it. I'm talking with Tim Mack short consultant for Nick Pate. I asked him what the strategy was going into the game against Maldonado, and he said he's going to stay with what he's doing. The urethane ball's working on the right lane because his speed is soft enough. And then, obviously, the real strong, aggressive ball on the left lane. Speaking of soft enough, did you get a load of uh, what he does in his spare time as a job? Who, Nick? Yeah. No. Works at a massage therapy studio. Where does it say that in his bio? I do my work, my friend. I go deep in the bio. Like a deep tissue massage. Takes the kinks and the stress out of that rack. Well, I'll tell you what, he's done a really nice job of managing his game. He had the one hiccup the last game where he whipped on the four pin, but he's made some nice shots and really has managed both lanes. What did he say his key was? The mental, mental, mental toughness. Yeah, the mental toughness, the mental focus. Tim Mack called him a maniac. He said, man, I had to, I had to focus differently. Maldonado with the strike there. So he goes strike, spare, strike. And he's got a lot of fans, Kimberly, watching him back home in Houston right now. He absolutely does. And Sean Maldonado's adorable two and a half year old daughter, Mia, was born with profound hearing loss in both ears. Now, when she was just 15 months old, she had surgery for cochlear implants. And a month later, in December of 2018, they were activated. And I'm happy to report that Mia is thriving and has now been hearing for just over a year. Still has some work with a speech therapist, a profession my mom had. So great respect for those who take care of that. Particularly when you're working with the young ones, says she can hear 
just fine right now. She's catching up so quickly with her speech. One of her favorite words, it's not why. <laughs> it's no. No. No, all different types of forms of no, yeah. right? Crossing the arm, shaking the head, the no. Uh, but it has been all yes for Maldonado so far. Three strikes in his first four frames. Level with Pate. Pate looking for a turkey. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Three in a row now for Pate. Really good touch on that right lane with the urethane ball for Nick. Getting that to read properly and face the one three pocket the correct way. Remember the last match, Anthony Simonson using urethane left a couple of ring and tens on that lane. Nick doing an excellent job of managing both of these oil patterns. He's been fantastic in stringing strikes together. The opening match, he had a double closed with the four bagger. Last match, five in a row. Frames three through seven. Come on, get that 10 down. So that's gonna end a string of three straight for him. And now he's got a real big challenge here in the fifth. Two, four, 10. Yeah, this ball doesn't get back and looks like it was Hydra playing two, four, eight, ten. 10. The eight goes last. He's gonna try to get over here and slide and cut that two pin over into the 10 and the ball take out the four pin. Well, this is how you draw it up, or at least that's how I did. And Nick must have been listening because he cut the two over in the 10 perfectly and avoids an open frame. Remember that one in the fifth. Maldonado, down seven. The hop and the party in the pit. And his first lead. Three. had five, rather, let me take that back. Yes, had five top 10 finishes last year. This will be his first of this campaign. Oh! Yeah, well, he's throwing a zing hybrid and he just threw another zinger for a four bagger, or as a good friend of mine once called it, a ham bone. I'm sorry, what? A ham... A ham bone. Ha ham bone? Ha ham bone. Ha ham a ham bone? No, a ham bone. Oh, a ham bone. Ham bone! Ham bone! Welcome back to the PBA in prime time. Our continuing coverage of the Go Bowling PBA Indianapolis Open. Come your way from Royal Pin Woodland here in Indianapolis. Our thanks to Jim Doty and John Harbuck for being in attendance. John, president of Strike 10 Entertainment. Jim Doty, the Hall of Famer and the GM here at Royal Pin Entertainment. This place, Randy, it is revered territory in the bowling world. Yeah, it really is. You know, one of the other cool things about Woodland is when you win here, you get your PBA Champions banner hung up in Beer 30 Pub. Now there's several banners down there. Weber's got three, Mark Ross got one, Ron Plumby Jr's got two. Mine's hanging up there, and it's been there since 1996. I gotta go look at that after this match. You didn't see all the banners hanging up? I missed it. It is so cool. They've traveled throughout the Boeing Center, throughout all of the re renovations that have happened <laughs> in this center. They just keep moving, but I'll tell you what, They've kept beautiful care of all those banners. They really yeah. cherish them. I love traditions like that in this oh, sport. Oh, it's awesome. Pete, looking off the spare. Down 13. That was me, that was me. All right, so you heard him say it. That was me, that was me. Poor release, the ball hung. It didn't get back to the pocket. The good news is he only left a two pin.
Could have been worse, Rob. Could have had company. And with that one down, so three strikes, three spares for Pate here in our semifinal. Take a look at the way he's playing these two lanes and how different it is because of the bowling balls. So left lane is the red ball, right lane is, or right, the blue ball is the right lane. So the urethane ball is the blue one. And you can see that they're about 10 boards difference from lay down to the arrows. And you can see just how much different that motion is. And, and why is that? Why is each lane different when you, when, in this right of target in this day and age when you think you can just manufacture precision 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 everything is going to be the same why is it different bowling balls are made differently i'm not uh, talking balls i'm talking, talking the ball lane. i'm well, talking the lane well but keep in mind that the the two oil patterns are five feet in length different right and so the players have to play each lane different and the lanes are built differently as well. There's different. Well, the kind topography. Of, exactly. The topography and based on the installation, that changes as well, or can be different. Right. Really nice cover. Now, what I like about what Sean Maldonado is doing is he's using the same ball on both lanes, so his shape is very similar. Whereas Nick Pate's shape can't be anything close. Right. Because the two bowling balls he's using are worlds apart. Looking for five in a row, finding it. Boy, he's got a nice look. Randy, you and I. Yep. Your one seats. Kyle Troop. Yes, for Svensson. We'll see you next Sunday, noon Eastern here. Benson, the one seed next week for the doubles, the one seed tonight for the singles event. He will take on the winner of this one, Maldonado, starting to distance himself from Pate. Maldonado is just shaping his bowling ball perfectly right now. Remember, he left a 10 pin in the second. Everything else has been strikes, Rob. Maldonado sits, having just cracked open a six-pack. Pressure on Pate. Go 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 three straight spares. He needed that strike. Talked about the double show next Sunday. Here. He's got one re-rack left. You see that white slash underneath his name. Down 38. We begin the foundation frame ninth. Go oh, Gets a little more air. A little lock there, Rob. Got his hand in it. Locked it a bit and got the ball to read and face the pocket perfectly. There you go. So pair. Maldonado. Oh my God. Didn't like it. Oh, he gets a big break. Huge. Huge break. Look at the difference in that shot versus what he's been doing. A good three boards inside a target. That ball could have got, gotten five easily. Instead, he trips out the seven and the 10, only leaving the four pin. We've seen this shot miss tonight, but not here. 
Hey, you know what? It's okay to get a break every now and then. Absolutely. Again, Maldonado has never won on the tour. Gotta let it go. Big fan of Houston sports teams, including the Houston Astros. Randy's got some issues with the Astros. In fact, I thought you were gonna throw a beanball at Maldonado last night. Well, he needs a spare and good count. Spare and five, and he's gonna shut out Nick Pate, and he'll meet Jesper Svensson in the finals, but you're right. I'm still mad that his Astros cheated my Dodgers out of the World Series. He gets the spare. Maldonado this close to taking on your one seed, Jesper Svensson. to the title match. Great run from Nick Pate. It'll come to a close here. So your one seed, Jesper Svensson, now really sweating out this title match. There he is at 9-12 Eastern. That's the epitome of relaxation, yeah. right? Yeah. As my wife says, take it a ninny. Take it a little ninny. <laughs> Nice run, nice, shot, nice yeah. run by Nick. It's a good story. He'll be back. Yeah, I'd like to see him back. Yep. Nick Pate, congratulations. Great run, winning twice here, but it's the Candyman moving on. And up next, we're going to go in the pocket with that man, Jesper Svensson, the Iceman, on why he creates so much heat on the hardwood. Last year here at Royal Penn Woodland, Norm Duke captured the 2019 Go Bowling PBA Indianapolis Open. The vet completed a terrific week of bowling, had a victory over West Malott in the semis, and then an emotional 237, 219 victory in the final against Jason Belmonte. It was the 39th career title for the PBA <laughs> Hall of Fame. We got a little lift from West Malott after the win. Who will win it this year? Well, it's down to two. Jesper Svensson and Sean Maldonado, one versus two. Our In the Pocket feature gives you a chance to get a closer look at the pros on the PBA Tour. And this week, the focus is on our number one seed, the Iceman. Jesper Svensson is in the pocket. I think that I can do something that nobody else can do. I want to be competitive every time. I really want to make sure that I can make cuts, make match plays and stuff like that. When I'm comfortable and I have it, I can strike more than anybody in the world. And I haven't been scared of dreaming and becoming a very good bowler. Now I'm here on the PBA Tour and enjoying life, so I did something right. So there is the Iceman this week. Rolled 30 games. How about that average? Just a shade under 239, and he went 11 and 5 in match play. So our title match uninterrupted is next. Svensson Maldonado going for a title and perhaps a million dollar payday. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. Title match time in Indy. Maldonado Svensson. The number one seed has eight PBA Tour titles. From Gothenburg, Sweden, Jesper Svensson. The Iceman cometh. His power is unmatched on the PBA Tour. 
and there's a million dollars on the line for a 300 game in his match. He's the only Southpaw on the show, and last night, many of the pros were saying Jesper has a shot. And why does he have a shot? Why does everybody from tour reps, bowling experts, the pros think that he's due a million dollars? These two oil patterns fit his game perfectly. He loves them. He's the only left-hander on that side. Mr. Maldonado in play for a million dollars as well. Sean's got a pretty good look too there. Mm -hmm. He's gonna give, he's gonna give Jesper all he wants. Maldonado had seven strikes en route to a 246. That 246, the high we've seen tonight. It was 16 pins better than Nick Pate. Look at his opening shot. Svensson, your one seed. Now listen, one of these players is looking to get their banner added. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention Hall of Famer Jason Couch having two banners here as well. Why and, does he have two? Well, because he won here twice. But you, you know why I'm mentioning that? Because uh, he just sent me an ugly text during the commercial break. Did he? Yeah. Can you share it with me? <laughs> no. Jason, <laughs> getting ready for the senior tour. I'm pretty excited about that. He's going to, it'll be like printing money for him. <laughs> He's a good man. Isn't he, he is. Svensson in the second. Oh! 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 back opening jacks for the Iceman. Still alive. I guarantee you, PBA, Fox, double checking the legal documents today. <laughs> like, uh, we're covered for this million dollar payday, right? Everything's gonna be okay, because they had heard the hype about Svensson and everybody's yeah. belief that he's on track for perfection. Maldonado trying to match him. Messenger will not get the 10. So Maldonado will not get that million dollar payday. Yes, he would love it, but as a consolation prize, he will happily take his first tour title, if he can get it tonight. All good, all good, I guess. Yeah, I know, I just I felt that one was trending a little, a little east. Bad angle. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So strike spare for the candy man to start. Took care of Spenson twice this week. Back on the strike train. Nice shot. Fast. If there was ever a player you'd like to see win for the first time, it'd be Sean Maldonado. He's a, he's a great guy and when when he was talking to us about his family, you could just see how important his family is to him. And um, it was just, a, it was a beautiful story that he told about his daughter and... Daughter Mia. Yep, be a feel good story, but he's got his hands full with this guy right here. Yes. So. Whoa. Fox PBA, guess what? You saved a million. You are clear. Yeah. For now. We still have one more shot at it, though. World Championship. I'm sorry, Masters. No. World Championship? Yeah, I was right the first yep. time. Yes, well, he's lucky. He just has to go after that seven. That ten was putting up a fight for a while. Benson looking for tour title number nine, Maldonado in pursuit of his first tour title. Look yeah. at the uh, 
very thin arsenal of Jesper yeah. Svensson. Yeah, one. Pitch black, which frankly f feels appropriate, particularly when you take a look at some of the, uh, the ink that adorns his yes. body. Good point. Bit of a tease there. Six. Again, we'll see Svensson next week on our double show. Wednesday night, Nova Seton Hall. I'm going to that game, Randy. Are you? Yeah, can't wait. Live here on FS1. Seton Hall, number one in the Big East. You are correct, sir. Had a nice win today on Fox. Villanova lost at home to Providence. Big East, what a great basketball conference this season. Spencer curls that one in, takes care of the sixth pin, and he takes a seat. Up steps Maldonado. And Randy, you were talking about Maldonado and, and, and the family, and what triggered it is our, our question to him of, you know, hey, how's, how's this season gone? And it was just kind of an exhale and rough. It's, it's been a grind, you know, only my second cash, not mm -hmm. shooting bad, but. I just haven't been strong enough. Trouble having a clear vision on Ways. He saw all 10 drop right there. His carry has been down, and he said, and being away from my family while I'm struggling just makes it that much worse. Negative thoughts start creeping in. He's got a, a new son, a four-month-old, SJ, Sean Jr. at home with, with Mia, Dominic, and his wife, Dolores. And, you know, you, you know what it's like to be away from the family on the tour. It, it, it is not easy, man, particularly if you happen to be struggling. I was out on tour as a full-time player for about 27 years, and I'll tell you, there, there wasn't a worse feeling than being in a slump and being away from home. Oh, get lucky. Look out. Maybe. Nope. Well, good news for Svensson, not so much for Maldonado. One pin match if he covers. And again, it's that left lane that has caused most of the issues tonight. Oh, Randy, let's take a look at some of the other finishers. Yeah, man. This week at the tournament. It's EJ Tackett. He'll be on the double show next week, finishing seventh. Belmo in eighth. Kyle Troop will also be yeah. on the double show. How about Ryan Schaefer, Bulls on the senior tour? Great, nice, great who's week that guy, for him. Who's that guy who came in 15th? Never heard of him. No idea. There's Wes Mallott in 16th. Norm Duke finished 17th, tied with Greg Ostrander, and they had a roll off, and Greg got in. Yes, but looks away. Hated it, but he's going to love the results. Well, I don't really like what's going on with his game, though. His last couple shots have kind of looked suspect. There's Kyle. Oh, is he? He's hanging with Pops. Hanging with Pops and... Uh, Think they're having fun tonight? Yeah, that's uh, that's his doubles partner for next week. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about his dad. No, Jesper. <laughs> oh, Guppy was coming out of retirement. His dad is his doubles partner tonight. Tonight, yes, look at that. Fear and Loathing in Indianapolis, written by Guppy. <laughs> Svensson, just one re-rack remaining. What's funny is back in the day, Guppy's hair looked exactly like Kyle's. So good to see those two smiling after all yeah, they've yeah. been through yep. lately. Yep. Svensson, down one. We begin the sixth. Back-to-back -back Jacks. Second pair of the title match for Svensson. Youngest ever win the Tournament of Champions. And right now is looking for title number nine. He gets into that light hit zone. Yeah, you think he uh, think he liked that one, Rob? A little bit. Yeah. Good strike from Maldonado. Got some numbers that are fluctuating over there a little bit, but that ball 
faced the pocket nicely, got a little farther right. You can do that on this oil pattern. It's a little more forgiving than we've seen over the last three weeks. He said he was kind of lucky to get where he is with how he bowled. And when I say that, I mean with the arsenal that he used, he said, basically just used two balls through qualifying in match play. Yeah. Hooked on the right, straight on the left. Yeah. Two balls for the entire tournament. Crazy. Yeah, he's, he, think about the fact that he's probably got about 22 bowling balls in the locker room. He's probably drilled a couple more for the week. He used two balls all week. Those are some big eyes on that hit. Yeah. So two in a row for Maldonado. Two in a row for Svensson as well. Steps up now. Lead back to Maldonado. Ice oh, 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 oh. Tempting fate, Iceman. That came back from Helsinki. Oh wait, that's Finland. Yeah, that's all right. It, the point was made. I get it. It was a good one. This one is wide left, and it comes smoking off the edge of the gutter. That's a lot of pin action, Rob. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look at what that, yeah, that may be the best look ever. Right? What do you want me to it's do? Like, are you here? kidding me? Really? Svensson working on a three bagger. Oh, go, go. Hey, Hambone! There's my man. There is your There's main my man. Your main man. I dig that kid. <laughs> That kid's all right in my book. I'm going to give him a travel voucher. We're going to get him to Vegas and Reno. Get him to travel the tour? Yeah. Homeschool? Signs like that. I'll do it. OK. Maldonado, down 19. Trying to match all these strikes from the Iceman. And now he's got three in a row. Oh, a little steely gaze there. We got us a match. We sure do, partner. Exactly what you want, a title match. to have it come down in the ninth and 10th frame. Maldonado aces this. Man's never won a national title. He's been through a lot. Sure has. It's been a long road for this, this 33 year old journeyman, eighth year on tour. Immediately out of his hand. So bad. Right so here. bad. Four and a half left. Trajectory was not near near far enough to the right. Too much up the lane. It's not over. Oh no. Not over by a long shot. He's got to take care of this, which he does. But I mean, you got to think that you, you, you can't give Jesper this, right? I mean, Jesper, ninth and tenth, he takes it off the sheet. It's 268. Right now at 230, Maldonado's at 220. Svensson at 238, Maldonado's at 227. He's 0-3 all time as top seed. Crazy. He averages about. 205.66, the opposition of 219 in those title matches. Wow, oh, oh, he's closing in on tour title number nine. That puts him into the 240s. Max score for Maldonado, 237. You can see it right there. Watch this. The four pin is going to go to the sidewall and slap the seven. Silly. Spencer taking a re-rack, so he is yep. he's out of re-racks right now. This dude's cooler than a polar bear's feet. That's why his nickname is the Iceman. Right now he's totally jacked on the inside, but you wouldn't know it. Could be quite a run for Spencer. Remember, he's part of the number one seed next Sunday. Our double show with Kyle Troop, who's in attendance right now, watching his doubles partner. Oh, 
A strike for the title. Uh oh. Well, he's got to make this. If he misses, Maldonado can snatch victory away from Spenson in the 10th frame. The three, five, six, and you heard him say it. I didn't really catch that at the bottom. Has to make this and get three. The three he can handle. This spare, easy to chop. Takes care of it. Three, five, six in the pit. Three pins separate him from a ninth tour title. Take your spare ball. Throw it right down the middle. He's far enough away from the, the gutter. Still. Th this one's going to be going. This is me. This is me giving the advice to the oh, ice man. This is going to be pretty straight up the lane. Trust me. Yep. Needs three. Gets all ten. Give him number nine. match coming down to the 10th frame with the drama when he left the 3-5-6 covers it perfectly and then 10 in the pit to seal the win nine wins at age 25 but it's been a while it's been a longer drought than we expected Maldonado closes out he'll finish in second place that's Kyle Arkentruth Guppy and company hugging it out with the Iceman there's Tim Mack in there Oskou. And you got to feel for Sean. But it's nice to see him bowl yeah. and have such a, 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 a nice week. He gave Jesper everything he wanted. Now Jesper is the man taking home the hardware. Thank you. Thank you, Storm, Vice, Coolwick, Gas Bowen. You guys are the best. Yolene, I know you're watching. I love you, babe. Thank you for everything. Love you. All right, yes, Barrett. That was a super close match. Walk us through that 10th frame. I can't remember, to be honest. You know, you really want to step up and, and get a strike, but um, I'll take the spare, I guess. Like, um, it wasn't the best of shots I've ever thrown, but it's enough. and. I'll take it. Well, uh, you were so confident coming into this match. You even took a nap in the previous match. How much did that nap help you when you came out here? The confidence boost always helps. Obviously, I bowled great in qualifying, but to come under the TV lights, it's, it's something different. And um, these things are hard to win. And um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm happy. Thank you guys for coming out, too. You guys had a good Congratulations on your ninth PBA Tour title. Thank you. We did it. 245, 226, the victory for the Iceman, and get ready for another dose of the Iceman. You'll see him next Sunday, noon Eastern, right here on FS1, and also streaming on the Fox Sports app. It's the Roth Holman PBA Doubles Championship. A win tonight in prime time. The tack on a win next week, and all of a sudden, Jesper Svensson, hello, player of the year. Yeah. Conversation. Spenson, the one seed, wins another title, his ninth of his career, and the Swedish phenom does it from the one seed spot. He'll try and do it from the one seed spot as well next Sunday. Good job by that young man. Hope to see him back in Indy. Spenson, your winner. <laughs>